Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to other videos and uh, paid requests this time from Kevin. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, tier lists, re-reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for another episode of Game of Thrones, Season 1, Episode 2. And it's been forever since I've seen the first episode, so I vaguely remember it. I know at the end of the first episode, there was these two people kissing, but they were the kissing cousin sort, except without the cousin part. It was a insectual motif, and this kid Bran saw it. He did that first trouble is he got pushed off the damn tower, thought to be dead, but he's unconscious. And there's a lot of uh, stories going on at the same time. Emilia Clark. Which I understand by the end of it, she pretty much goes crazy, kind of becomes the the villain, and then gets her ass killed. In this, she was forced to marry Jason Momoa, Jason Mamma Mia, and really her story in this episode is to ask people, how do I fuck Jason Mamma Mia properly to make them happy? We must fuck. How do I fuck him? That's pretty much her story here. Uh, Tyrion, played by Peter Dinklage, joins in. He knows he's looked down upon, upon in the family because of his height. But that's why he reads a lot to keep him as smart and knowledgeable as possible. I said the, the one kid, Bran, is in a coma. If I understand, by the end of the show, he becomes the teen. And Peter Dinklage works with him. Uh, the character Jon Snow, who is known as a bastard son of Sean Bean's character. And Sean Bean tells him, listen, you may not have my name, but you have my blood. And Jon Snow's asking, him, well, what about my mom? Who's my mom? Where's my mom? Mama, mama, mama. And Sean Bean's like, well, you know what? When we get back, I'll tell you. I'm like, why don't you tell him now? Why the fuck do you have to wait? Tell him now. You don't have five minutes ago. Your mom's this. She's over there. Or your mom's this, she's over there. I mean, I think you got enough time for a 5-10 minute conversation. <laughs> but no. Uh, but Sean Bean leaves for the capital and to see the team. Jon Snow is going to leave to join the Night Watch, which is a place to guard the northern borders, which used to be prestigious, but now there's a lot of criminals and assholes there. Peter Dinklage goes with them. And for I understand, Josh Snow, by the end of it, he just does the same fucking part again. I, I could be wrong, but from what I heard, Josh Snow, by the end, he really doesn't get anything. He doesn't really get any reward. He just goes back to the fucking northern border that guarded it again. <laughs> so, he might have just go in a damn circle. I mean, if, that, if that's the case, because I'm not as knowledgeable as others on this show, they're like, well, damn, that was fucking pointless. And then Amelia Clark asking other women, how do I make love to him properly? Well, you gotta ride his ass. Well, his, the thing opposite his ass. And you gotta look at him in the eyes. Uh, this assassin tries to kill Bram, but his dog, his wolf, fucks up the assassin. You have this annoying twerp of a character named Joffrey who is looking at a boy, the butcher's boy, just you know, playing with a stick and Joffrey's like, you are not the knight? Go put it up and try me on. Well, it's just a stick, my lord. I don't care. So the guy's cutting the, the kid's face and a little girl who I think is related to the girl that Joffrey was seeing, starts attacking him. And her wolf bites the shit out of him, deservedly so. But then Joffrey, being a little twerp, tells his little mommy whatever, and then... Number one, <clears throat> you later find out that Butcher Boy's been killed. Number two... They're supposed to kill her wolf, but she pits another dog, another wolf, to, to die so that hers could get uh, free without people knowing about it. 
Sean Bean is ordered to kill this innocent dog, and he doesn't do anything. Like, he sees his butcher boy having been killed for no damn reason. He doesn't do shit. He doesn't know about it yet. Well, try and investigate a little bit. You know, a little bit of hindsight, a little bit of Sherlock Holmes. And then this dog who didn't do anything wrong, you fucking kill him. But because your fucking rules are back to the day of medieval times. You know what? F fuck you and your rules. Fuck your rules. And fuck Sean Bean's character. Does nothing. And that's the thing is like... The only interest I got was when Jon Snow and Peter Dinklage's character were having a conversation. It was like the one scene I gave an iota of crap about. Where they both are ostracized from their families. Because one is looked down upon because he's, as he put it, a dwarf. The other is the bastard son. So, like, the conversation they were having with someone interesting, I'm like, can the show just be about these two and these two alone and everything else be forgotten? Because that's the only thing I give a rat's ass about. I'll say this right here, based on that first impression, this show isn't for me. I mean, I've never been a medieval times guy. I mean, I like Army of Darkness, but that's because of Bruce Campbell's character. But I've never been a f big fantasy guy. I mean, I, there's so much to watch. Willow, for example. But I'm not a Lord of the Rings fan. Uh, Excalibur from back in the day is okay, but it's not I felt my love. Like I said, I've never been a huge fantasy guy. I don't know what it is. Dragons are cool. Cool motif. Cool idea. Love... When it's done right, the look of them. Uh, that's why I was disappointed with Rain of Fire. Because you take dragons, you put them in the modern world. And with a big budget, it would be cool. And I think the director, Rob Bowman, let that film down. It's not the worst film ever, but it could have been a lot better, too. If you had, like, a, I don't know, Rennie Harlan or someone else directed it, maybe you could have got some punch to it. <clears throat> But yeah, it's like a lot of stuff happened, but at the same time, nothing's happening. <laughs> it's just, I don't care if Amelia Clark needs to be taught how to have sex. Whoop do you fucking do? I don't care. Sean Bean, I didn't. It's looked at like he's the main character, but at the same time, it's... I don't want to say he's indecisive, but because he's rude, it's like, I don't want to kill this wolf, his daughter. You don't want to investigate what happened, who the hell this Joffrey is, what he did. The little girl, then the... I know the girl Joffrey's going out with, she fate... Oh, I don't remember anything. But the little girl didn't say anything. The little girl didn't tell the truth. The little girl lied. Little girl blah blah blah. Or they just didn't listen to her. I can't remember. Sorry. I'm sure the show said I just can't remember. <sighs> I just could not give a rat's ass about what was going on. I could not give a rat's ass about what was happening in terms of the story, the plot. I'm just bored. Fairly bored. And Sean Bean just came off, I don't know, his actions made him unlikable to me. What's the rules? The I don't give a fuck. Fuck your rules. And... Like I said, the one bit I liked was the Peter Dinklage, Jon Snow, their bits of dialogue between each other. I wish the whole show, I wish the show was just about them. Their journey, their point of view, two outsiders looked out upon by their families, but whether they liked or disliked each other, they have something in common. And uh, Peter Dinklage, how do you feel about him as a person? I, I do think he definitely came off as the most interesting because of his way of words and at times being. I think one of the first that we see him is 
Joffrey saying, I'm not going, I don't give a shit about Bran, and Peter Dude's just slapping the shit out of him. <laughs> and his verbal wit and talking with other people. But e even though of his height, he's not going to bat down from anybody. So I just see why Tyrion, just from the get go, why he became a focus for a lot of people who watch the show. He definitely brought a lot of intrigue, interest in it. Like I said, just have it be about him and Jon Snow. Just have it be about those two and just have the whole thing from their point of view and maybe it'd be more my cup of tea and liking. And that's how that because he had to deal with so many characters. It's like so many points of view. It's like we're here, then we're over here, then we're over here. For me, it lacks a bit of focus. I just not for a lot of people. This is like one of the... Hey, until I guess the finale, it was one of the most beloved shows. But that's the other thing. Like Knowing how even the most dire fans, most of them thought the finale, like the last season or two, was dog shit. It's like, wow... Does it really make it worth to watch it for something that apparently even hardcore fans say the ending wasn't worth it? So, I guess it just isn't my cup of tea. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.